Hi, and welcome to episode 148 of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm Ren. And I'm River. And today we are going to be talking about ley lines. We kind of brought it up in our one of our previous episodes, our recent previous episodes, and we thought it would be a fun topic. And why not do it uh, now rather than later? Absolutely. Woo. Okay. But first, what are we drinking? So this is the most important thing of the whole podcast. So we are drinking Ley Line Elixir. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. So uh, it's blue carousel to represent the mystical and unseen energies. Vodka for clarity and strength. See, we don't usually break it down like this. So it's kind of cool. So vodka for clarity and strength, symbolizing the power of the ley lines. And then you have fresh lemon juice to add a zesty, refreshing note, symbolizing the connection between sites. Mm-hmm. elderflower liqueur which you should you should all try this it's really good uh, yeah i actually bought it for us uh-huh. when we were practicing making our little cocktails so it's, it's delicious lovely. Mm-hmm. and uh this is for its floral and magical qualities and then simple syrup to balance the flavors and represent the harmonizing nature of ley lines so i like to add a little bit of sparkling water Mm-hmm. I, I would say it adds that bubbly component. I to do symbolize, like the bubbles. Yes, to symbolize the flow of energy and connection. And then you can add a few dashes of edible gold dust. <laughs> yes, I I am really into the the edible. You are the glitter, glitter right now. and all of that. I'm I wonder sorry. what your poop looks like. <laughs> I, I honestly have not paid attention. Glittery. Uh, but the last um ingredient is optional for a touch of mystical sparkle if you will yes absolutely it's really good and it's very fun yes yes and uh this one was really good i love um blue carousel not so much vodka but the vodka is kind of hidden by like the lemon juice and the elderflower liqueur so we were making this and she's like can I use rum? <laughs> yeah, I was like, but there was not, no other rum. Like vodka's like, I don't even know how to describe vodka. It's not like a clean taste, obviously, but it doesn't have it like, is a to me. flavor. Yeah, it's not got a flavor, whereas a, a lot of the rums do. I yeah. mean, you like you like a lot of the, well, you like all rum, honestly. I like all rum. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like Kraken, it's got a spice to it's it. It's spice, um, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. It's, so vodka worked for this one. Good, and, yes. and, you know, we'll have to try it with with rum. We haven't tried it. So we'll mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess let's hop right into it. Let's go. Woo. So Woo. what are ley lines? So in the world of witchcraft and magic, because that's the world we live in, obviously, mm-hmm. um, ley, lines, obs. Obs, ley lines are often regarded as invisible threads of power that crisscross the earth, connecting sacred sites, ancient monuments, and natural features. So these mystical pathways are believed to channel the planet's energy, which I love, influencing mm-hmm. the spiritual landscape and our own magical practices. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of feng shui, the feng shui of Earth, of our of Ooh. our Mother Earth. Mm. Yes, but feng shui, feng shui, it, you can change feng shui in ways, like not feng shui and how it, what it means, but if things aren't yes, situated that way, you then you can, can change, change them. The energies, but, and you can't really change the Earth's energies. Yeah, so does that mean that the Earth's energies are already aligned, or do they need to be shifted back? Like, maybe that's why our Earth is maybe not having such a great time right now, because humans yeah. aren't in balance, and it's not in balance. Or That's very interesting. This topic... I I read a lot. I guess you all know I love my sci-fi fantasy novels mm-hmm. and ley mm-hmm. lines are an often a component in fantasy novels about where magic comes from and that kind of thing. And so I've always been interested in ley lines, but I wanted to know more about them as far as witchcraft in our lives and mm-hmm. our, our our real world. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, ley lines are these theoretical alignments of landmarks, religious sites, and other significant locations on the Earth's surface. That's one definition. Mm-hmm. And then, like you said, the other definition is that it's actually energy that crisscrosses the Earth. And then some of them say they do connect the ancient sites. Mm-hmm. They're they're supposed to carry really powerful 
currents of energy and that we, witches and regular people, anybody can Anyone? tap into these <laughs> and access them if we know how. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm curious. I don't know. Do we talk about this any later? Do the ley lines cross between... Um, like Egypt at all? <laughs> yes, okay. 100%. I'm really excited. And I will say if that is my part, I got a new job. So yes, I she's so happy. If I was going to say anything, but I did. And so she's I've been not all over miserable the place. anymore. No. y'all. So I've been all over the place and uh, River did my notes for me. So <laughs> <laughs> I did. And I haven't read over them. And I'm like, this is what you're going to say. And she's like, like okay. okay. <laughs> so off of that, anyways, uh, enough about me and my own podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, another definition says that ley lines or lays, L-E-Y-S, mm -hmm. are geographical, geographical lines mm -hmm. that crisscross all over the globe. So similar to latitudinal I always mm -hmm. mess up that word. Latitudinal and longitudinal <laughs> lines. Ley lines are often seem like they seem to provide a structure or system for many monuments and natural landforms, which I mm -hmm. thought was really like natural landforms. Mm -hmm. So uh, further, they supposedly carry them with them like rivers of supernatural energy. Mm -hmm. And so at the intersection point of these ley lines of these lines, are often said to be sections of concentrated energy, which can be tapped into by certain individuals. Yes. And th where they crisscross, uh, we will talk about that yes. more in a little bit. Yes. But I found a definition that called ley lines um, being as Mother Earth's veins. Ooh. Isn't that the greatest definition ever? It makes me feel squicky, though, for some reason. That, really? That definition kind of makes me feel... Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. I loved it. It's like Mother Earth, who we live on and who loves us and who is, you know, everywhere around us. It's the veins that pump her life force and energy. I just, yes, I, yes. I loved that. Mm -hmm. But the term ley line was first coined by Alfred Watkins, and he was this English antiquarian in the early 20th century. I read that and as he, equestrian. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, he was probably an equestrian too. Who, who knows? Or an Aquarius person. He Maybe he was an Aquarius. I don't uh, know what his Aquarius birthday was. He's an Aquarius, Aquarius, wow. <laughs> I was trying to make a joke and I can't. Aquarius, and uh, uh, let's just move on. We'll just move on. <laughs> so what caused him to coin this term is that he noticed that many ancient sites like stone circles, burial mounds, churches, all seem to be aligned in straight lines across the landscape. Mm. And that fascinated him. He was up in the hills um, over in England and he was just surveying the landscape. And he's like, mm -hmm. oh my God, that those are all in straight like grids, like straight lines. And so he proposed that these alignments weren't just mere coincidence, but they were purposeful and that they together joined this network of energy pathways. Mm. So the word lay is an Anglo-Saxon word that means clearing of the trees or clearing of the woods, which makes sense. If you're going to have does, yeah. things in a straight line, you, you know, you can't go up over the trees. You got to clear the trees away to make yeah. that straight line go through. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in 1961, wed, wed, Oh, I didn't put his first name. Alfred. That's some dude named it's not Wed. Alfred. It's not the Watkins dude we were just talking about. It's just Wed. No, it's a new okay. guy, a later guy in 1961. Okay, so different dude named Wed uh, resurrected the idea of ley lines by suggesting ley lines were used by prehistoric humans. I love this. I'm sorry. I love this. To communicate <laughs> with aliens. And in fact, he believed they were paths created to guide UFOs visiting Earth. Isn't that amazing? That's so, fascinating. I, I love this idea. Maybe, maybe not so much the aliens. I love the idea that they are ley lines that are used to, you know, connect. How do you say this? So, you know how we've talked about... um. Throughout history, uh, ancient civilizations have had 
no like seemingly no contact with each other but they all had yes. very similar things and yes. growth all at the same time oh that's and clever so, i hadn't thought of that i love the idea of ley lines connecting like those are energies that they could have used like you know how we have phones and yes. we can talk to each other instantly like that i'm thinking that the pyramids and other pyramids along maybe ley lines and other locations of earth were used as a form of communication and energy transfer yeah like so the people that were creating the pyramids, mm -hmm. if they were on a ley line, then that same energy is going to go across the earth to another place. And that would kind of explain it would why like the these other cultures and... have. Yeah. 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 Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. But uh, I mean, aliens could also be valid. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, we don't know. So, no, we don't. So. I really like this idea because ley lines are believed by many people to be a series of these metaphysical connections. I really, I like the mm -hmm. word metaphysical. Um, I do too. But like a, it links like a grid of some sort, like mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one school of school of thought yeah. believes. Mm -hmm. A school of thought. What? You've never heard that. No. My mind is boggled. <laughs> yeah, there are schools of thought, different different I it theories. Was a coin, a coin coins of thought. of thought. Yeah. No. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, like like a coin, a penny for your thoughts type of. Well, vibe? I mean, there is a penny for your thoughts, but the like school in the form of like there's different colleges. Like you've got um, different ways of thinking about a topic it's okay. called a school of thought i thought it was like a like a coin of thought because it kind of went in with like a penny for your thought and so all my no. thought process okay so one coin of thought believe <laughs> <laughs> is believed that these ley lines carry either positive or negative energy oh that could and be bad so i i mean i like this idea so it is believed that there were uh that where two or more lines kind of intersect or converge you have a place of great power and energy and i i like to think that the ley lines are like rivers they can only flow one way i really like that so if you have one going quote backwards from like a direction of what the other one is and maybe they intersect somewhere what happens if one's going backwards and forwards blah 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 yeah somewhere i had read during researching all of this that there was a culture, it might have been the Aborigines in Australia, who are believe that same thing, that they run in one direction only. And mm. so, and a lot of them, I believe it was like down a waterfall down a cliff. And so it disturbs them when people climb up the cliff going up oh. when the waterfall is going down. They feel like that is just wrong. It's just wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And I remember, I always talk about the Charmed TV show, the yeah, original. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I know. I loved it. It was wonderful. But their mansion supposedly was at the center of a pinnacle that was made up of ley lines. And so mm -hmm. it was super powerful where mm -hmm. their house was located. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But one of the biggest challenges to the ley line theory is that there are so many places around the world that could be cons considered sacred mm -hmm. that you know, you can pretty much make a, a straight line out of anything. Yeah. Um, and so the naysayers are like, you know, you can't say that it connects sacred sites because what's sacred to one person isn't sacred to someone else. I mean, and so, that's true. you know, I mean, I guess, you know. yeah. And so I, I actually, and we'll talk more about this later, but I actually think of it less as the site itself, as opposed to, um, Man, well, we'll we'll get into it later. It's a whole chicken ver chicken and egg type thing, okay, which I'll sure. I'll get to in a minute. So, um, according to this person on Tumblr, it is fat p h a t fat <laughs> lava deactivated and a whole bunch of numbers, which we'll we'll put it when we post it. Ley okay. lines. I, I really like their little article, which is why I, I wanted to give <laughs> them credit lava for this. lava with a pH. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Pretty hot and tasty. Oh, okay. yum. <laughs> um, according to that person, ley lines are also known as fairy paths. 
and there are straight lines that are etched across ancient landscapes whose power, while somewhat dormant in many places, can still be tapped into today. These lines of energy were created in, in this person's thought process by the footsteps of thousands of people for thousands of years and are aligned with countless sacred sites, such as stone circles, churches, burial mounds, and a lot, which that makes sense because mm -hmm. if you did have a site, say a church kind in the past, a pagan temple or whatever it was, mm -hmm. there would be thousands of people treading that path to that site. And in this person's mind, that's what creates the ley lines. Yeah. And the crossroads that we were talking about, where you said that one or more of the these ley lines meet, are supposed to be seen as places of super incredible power. And they're marked, like in the United Kingdom, with groves of hawthorn or pine. So Ooh. that's something to pay attention when you're out and about in the world, is to see if you see this kind of uh, intersection that have certain geographical qualities. qualities. Yes. Yeah. That's a good word. Qualities. <laughs> but these it's locations. It's one of my good qualities. <laughs> ba -da -da -ba. Okay. So <laughs> these locations that crisscross where the ley lines cross are supposed to be a place where the veil is at its thinnest. And mm -hmm. so it's not uncommon for these areas to be marked with unusual natural formations, such as weirdly twisted, knotted trees. You know, Ooh, we've all seen yeah. those odd trees, mm -hmm. um, strange shapes that you can see in the face or like on a mountain. When you look at it, you're like, oh, that looks like a face or um, things in, that just look odd in the fields and the hills, rock formations that don't look quite quite right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so supposedly even at these spots where the ley lines cross, you might actually see strange and extinct beasts, um, and come across things that, that aren't in our world all the time. Mm -hmm. It's, and it's, interesting. go ahead. No, yeah, it is. Go ahead. No. I mean, it, it's said that this mere treading of the path by enough people can create a line of power. And so think about it. What mm. about our highways? What about our train tracks? Mm. You know, what about that? Are we creating new ley lines by mm. driving to Atlanta? You know, the, you know, the amount of people that drive to Atlanta every day on 85 or whatever 20 or whatever it is that they drive on. Are we creating something, uh, a ley line there? You know, and what about like, that underground bar, like we got these, well, not necessarily underground, but those bars in Athens where you have sigils on the bathroom wall, all, all of those might be places of power. It, it hmm. just it boggles my mind. I never even thought about it like that mm -hmm. in a sense. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like highways, I hate highways. I don't know. Yeah. It's so... Well, and it could be that and chaotic and, and dangerous. We're in, our, <laughs> we're in our cars. And so does that prevent, because we're not actually touching our feet to the ground, you know? Yeah. Does that, does know. a highway and a train's the same thing. Mm. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Reddit can be so brutal. <sighs> there was, I was looking for information on maps of ley lines and that kind of thing. And this one Redditor goes, oh, well, here's my favorite one. And you click on it and it's this it's the united states and it has all these lines yeah and this other redditor is like that those that's a railway map <laughs> <laughs> and i was like "Ooh, wow yeah, yeah. people can yeah people they can, can be brutal uh-huh mm -hmm. uh but so the magical significance of ley lines i think we've already mm -hmm. hit on a lot of these okay um but i mean ley lines are ley lines an herb mm -hmm. is an herb. Ley an herb is, is an herb. <laughs> so in witchcraft, ley lines are, you know, these powerful sources. And, you know, you might be able to harness this energy for your magical purposes. Now, see, this is also where people, like, I always talk about magic as being energy. Mm -hmm. To me, that's what magic is. That is yeah. not to everybody. So to me, a ley line probably is a magical river, a, a river of magical power, mm -hmm. but that's not how everybody looks at it. So anyway. Okay. 
I mean, everybody, yeah. I mean, we're also not a podcast that's like, you have to think this way. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, I, I like that you said that because like yeah. it, what we're saying, it you might be like, that's not what I think a ley line is. <laughs> you okay. might be like, these girls are dumbasses, yeah, but you're they're funny. Stupid. So <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what a school of thought is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a coin of thought. <laughs> So um, you want to identify your ley lines. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to want to do your research. Now, wow, I feel like we haven't said that word in a while. Research, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're broken records on these things. So I feel like I know. we haven't really said, do your research, do your, but it's always, yes, do your research. That, yes, should be understood, honestly. Yes, yes. and also use your intuition, your gut feeling, whatever, because those, those mean something. And, and so I think that's a good point. Um, we, and to me, ley lines, especially if you feel like this is the right place to plant this tree, or this is the right place to put this statue in my garden, mm -hmm. that intuition could be you feeling a ley line of power source oh, yeah, or, that or could something. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. But you're going to want to look for location, alignment, et cetera. So mm -hmm. how to do this is you can look for ancient sites stone circles but you also have to be carry about like be carry wow be careful but <laughs> i'm just talking so fast be careful mm -hmm. if you find like stone circles in the middle of the woods it could be a fey trap so it be careful could be a fey trap yep. gotta be careful uh or natural landmarks that are said to be on ley lines mm -hmm. so tools such as maps of ley lines and dousing rods can be used to help locating these energy paths Mm -hmm. Um, you can align your rituals and spells with ley lines by amplifying their potency. Mm -hmm. And then ancient sites are often found along ley lines. So that might also give you an idea that you're on a ley line. Mm -hmm. So these locations can, are charged with centuries of spiritual magical activity, making them, you know, really important. And I would want to go there. <laughs> I know. See, this is what I was talking about, about the chicken and the egg thing. So, I mean, are ley lines created by the activity of man or does man place, so. do, does man place their places of importance on ley lines that are already there prior to man? That Probably that one. Earth. Cause that's you know what how I think. old the earth is the earth. Yeah. We haven't even been here for a second on its little calendar map. If you want to look yes. at a calendar map, those things don't get together. <laughs> But I knew what you meant. We're not even a second into yeah. like the and history so, of Earth. So I'm you just know, like this this whole concept of oh, if you ride on the train or you go on the highway enough, you're gonna create a ley line. And and I can say I can see that humanity might distort a ley line or affect a ley line, but I don't feel like I mean, we can create one i don't feel like we can create one because it's i mean we are energy this is where we could break it down because we are the universe basically mm -hmm. that's true we are You're the right. universe is split into multiple little beings that are mm -hmm. living but everything that we are is essentially in the universe because how are, how would we be made if there, it wasn't existing that's already true. that's true so i feel like we are everything but nothing at the same time and so mm -hmm. I feel like that's what ley lines can also be. I feel like we didn't create them, but what created them, maybe nothing. Maybe just the creation of Earth put them there. Or like mm -hmm. maybe it's like natural disasters within our planet, like a earthquake, a volcano eruption, anything mm -hmm. that's shifting can shift those ley lines. Like mm -hmm. it's hard because it's energy and it's not something that you we as humans can see or touch, but we can feel it. Mm -hmm. And so... I don't know. It, it is one of those things where it's like hard to explain, but I kind of understand what I'm saying. And I hope that I'm kind of making you understand what I'm saying, but yeah, I know I'm I get not. It. You get, I get it, it because we understand each other, but do this our listeners true. get it? I, I hope so. So I don't know. I just, I feel like we haven't created it. Now I feel like maybe if you want to go on the idea that humans can influence a ley line, then maybe highways where there's major activity, maybe it moves what about the ley line. Maybe it, maybe tulpas. ley lines aren't stiff. That's true too. Yeah. What if we wanted to move a ley line to be closer to our coven or whatever? Could we as a group of humans 
use the tulpa concept potentially to shift it. i know we haven't talked about tulpa in a while and some of my opinions about tulpas have changed i feel oh, like it really? takes well, i don't remember what we said in our past tulpa episode <laughs> but uh and it might be the same thing who knows um but i feel like instead of just having a smaller group like let's say a hundred thousand people i think mm-hmm. it takes more than that to create something the whole internet it cr- you know you need probably billions of people believing mm-hmm. in, with their whole heart like not just mm-hmm. half half for daisily mm-hmm. whatever that term is i you see i'm not good at terms half half what a daisily <laughs> half a daisily i kind of <laughs> like that word i think we've created a new word half a daisily like like they have to believe in it wholeheartedly not just half the way whatever that word I get it. that you usually use is um, i get it so it, i think it takes so much because then that in itself with the belief mm-hmm. is it feeling and energy in itself to change Agreed. what's going on um but i don't I think mean, that it, just like the a whole, small group can maybe do the whole that. concept of witchcraft though is the fact that we as individuals have the ability to take and manipulate the energy fields That's true. around us and you so do that I, I don't as know. either a single or a coven or, or whatever. a coven or yeah um, but yeah yeah i don't know hmm. um, anyways i think we had talked about the earth's energy blah 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 uh the veil the veil being thin mm-hmm. um yeah you can Which, perform hold on the Go veil ahead. being thin also makes me want to think about so if you are at a ley line Mm-hmm. On either of the days uh, of the cycle of Samhain or Samhain or the other one, what's the other one? The opposite. We were one. just talking about it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. Um. Anyways, you guys know what I'm talking about. I can't think after a long day. So, um, either of those, if you're on, if you're, ugh, if we're on that date where the mm-hmm. veils are thin, and then you go to another location where it's naturally thin like by mm-hmm. itself mm-hmm. like at a crossroads happen, yeah what would happen at that point i think would that, that be a that vital be, time to i think so harness those energies since i think 100 so, percent to it easily but then you also have to be careful so you have to yeah cast i mean your protection what words. you could end up yes absolutely because you could end up crossing over when the is veil that is you that get thin, interdimensional things like uh, the yes. Mandela effects and yes. stuff. Yes. Do you think maybe people were messing oh. around on this, and then that's why we have such like small but big things? That maybe. Are like, yeah, the Monopoly Man had a monocle, and but he mm-hmm. doesn't in this this world. But we all mm-hmm. remember it as a group. But mm-hmm. then that, we've already talked about Mel- Mandela. Effect. I know. I love that <laughs> concept. That's a whole whole but different thing. Let's say we're on the ley lines on like uh, where the veil is thin and then it's extra thin because we're there on Samhain let's say mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then we're at a crossroad mess, of yeah, ley lines and then you accidentally intersect into this weird mumbo jumbo of I'm trying to like purgatory but not purgatory yeah. like I think of it in like a purgatory way mm-hmm. and then you maybe you end up on the other side and then is that what mirrors what if a mirror is involved <gasps> oh <laughs> now my we're goodness just let's uh let's move on <laughs> We could take a mirror to a crossroad on Samhain and really create and really fuck shit issues. Up. <laughs> we can really fuck shit up. <laughs> well, oh you can use ley lines to perform enhanced rituals because obviously it's very powerful on on a ley line. So mm-hmm. you can use it as a conduit to help you channel your in- intentions. Although it's interesting if it only goes one direction as opposed to out into the universe, like. Mm. I like to think of casting. If it's on the ley line, is it going to get sucked into that river and only flow that direction? Mm-hmm. Yes. I Okay. What if, uh, I don't know. I picture these things moving hyper fast, like super fast, like the yeah. ley lines move fast. So what mm-hmm. if you cast a spell, let's say it gets sucked into the ley line, but it mm-hmm. moves fast to where it spreads everywhere. Yeah. And how does it go? Like, does it, because ley lines crisscross does it go and then go on every avenue that i feel like it like it? spreads like yeah like it just spreads huh 
I mean, I think a ley line would be really good to do earth magic on because it is part of the earth. So I feel like if you're an earth witch or if you want to cast spells that involve the earth's energy, then obviously if you go and find a ley line, that would be perfect. Yeah. You can also use it to energy energy clear that's not the right word (laughs) clear your energy I mean especially if it's moving fast like you're talking about what Mm -hmm. a great way to cleanse yourself or to cleanse your tools or whatever is to be in a ley line that's gonna um, move those energetic imbalances off of you yeah you can ground yourself on a ley line I mean that's that's interesting Mm, I like that idea and then if when you think about the harmony that's supposed to be involved with ley lines, meditation Ooh. It would be a great way to do a spiritual journey mm-hmm. through meditation or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, you can try to tune into the energy of a ley line, um, connect mm-hmm. with ancient wisdom, ancient spirits, deities, or with just the ley lines energies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like uh, I feel like the ley lines, I know we said they're in the earth. But I have a feeling I don't know that they're, that they're kind everywhere. of everywhere. Yeah, I, I think it might go all the way through. I feel like the universe probably has its own ley lines. Probably and then so. On that, can we astral jump them? Ooh, maybe. Okay, question. And if you guys want to answer this too, you can answer us on Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. What color is the astral world to you? Oh, that's a good question. Mine? I'm not going to tell you mine. Wait, I want to hear yours first. You want to hear mine first? I think yeah. it's blue. Blue. Yeah. Mine's purple. I don't really purple. Interesting. It's interesting. Purple, but like, I don't even know how to describe it. Hazy purple. Like, you know, like everything's like mine's light like in the middle. Sky blue, not a oh. deep blue. Oh. Yeah, it's like a, because I think of it kind of as when you're astral projecting, I kind of feel like you're not heaven, because I don't believe in heaven, but that's how I connotate it with blue. Mine's purple. It's like, I a, like purple better. How come it's mine not can't like be a, purple? I don't even, it's like maybe a pinky purple almost. This is totally off topic, but I'm going to insert it here. So, <laughs> y'all, we, I'm going to Dragon Con. Oh, yeah. I, when this comes out, <laughs> I will be at Dragon Con. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to start a witchy track at Dragon Con. And you all are witches that listen to us. So let us know if you all would be interested in doing a panel there or oh. do some kind of class there, because I have to be able to convince them that there's enough interest in. Um, witchcraft to start an actual track of witchcraft mm-hmm. they have writers mm-hmm. tracks which I, I like I do the writers track they've got science tracks which Ren loves oh yeah um, you know they've, they've got a, astronomy stuff they they were talking about some kind of sun flare thing is one of the things on the she's not coming with me this year she'll Mm-mm. she'll come for for one she's gonna meet me for dinner one night but yeah. she can't with her new yeah. job she can't mm-hmm. come mm-hmm. but um so, yes, if you all are interested and think it's a great idea and could come to Atlanta for Dragon Con, it's every year at Labor Day, that Labor Day weekend, let us know. And I will do my best to talk to the powers that be at Dragon Con to see if we can get one started. Oh, yeah, that would be. I know we've talked about this like kind of briefly, but. But yeah, so let us know what your thoughts on it. It just is fresh in my mind because we leave tomorrow, which Woo-hoo! will be will be yesterday when you all hear this <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah uh, okay where okay where were we let's get uh, back on topic let's hop into uh spiritual significance or okay okay anything else so in many traditions because we're you know this watkins dude isn't the only guy that's ever come up with the concept of um of, of ley lines yeah this is ancient cultures also had the idea of ley lines which we're going to talk about specific ones in a minute mm-hmm. but in many traditions ley lines are supposed to be associated with spiritual entities or deities mm-hmm. and it's supposed to be imbued with the powers of these spiritual entities or spiritual beings 
making them potent sites for magic work. So mm -hmm. if, and, and, but see, I don't know how we know which deity, like Jessica is very into Medusa. How do we know which ley line connects with Medusa? How do we know? I don't um, know. I mean. Well, or do they can... all, do mm -hmm. all ley lines, just because they're a natural source of energy, allow you to work with energies of all the different deities? I don't know. But also geographical alignment. Um, you know, this whole tying it into man-made structures, mm -hmm. which I can't decide if that's that whole chicken and egg thing. is Man-made is... or alien-made? Ooh, alien could be. <laughs> but like, I, I think as far as natural um, landmarks go, ley lines probably are aligned with the mountain ranges or ancient roads or um, rivers. And does man build these things because they feel just unconsciously feel unconsciously subconsciously they're not unconscious subconsciously <laughs> wow wow feel the power and they're like this is the perfect place for this pyramid because they subconsciously feel that i don't know i don't either i don't know um and i we kind of talked about like kind of finding the locations of ley lines mm -hmm. um but mapping your own ley lines so, like you can create a personal map i, I love that idea mm -hmm. and Absolutely uh, love it can that. be based on your local area if you're wanting to travel you can ba like you can map it off of where you're going or whatever it is like uh, and like, where research live, the sites and everything and see what it, there where was it could be an ancient indian uh, native american burial ground near my neighborhood oh wow and so it would be really cool so you can get a map of your area and then, like you said, do your research on historical information in your area and that can help you make a map of, That's a of good ley idea. lines in yeah. your area. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's rather interesting. I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. I, but, I just I just thought about it because of what you just said. No, but I really like these. And you can also do like community rituals where you organize rituals or events at locations known on ley lines. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can also just bring on a near or uh, being on, sorry, being on a new, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> being on it uh, or near a ley line is believed to, you know, kind of have that effectiveness and i really like that because it's natural energy that you're using not not anything else i don't know yeah everything's natural energy i suppose but i mean i guess so i i do like the idea that we talked about before about meditating mm -hmm. on a ley line um but you can also create a, sp a sacred space of your own on mm -hmm. a ley line you know you can build an altar on a ley line Ooh, yeah you know i mean how cool would that be it'd be great that if we had a ley cool. line in my backyard i don't know you know maybe i, I don't know who knows don't yeah know. yeah but and like with with the witchy garden if i put a pinnacle and i planted Ooh. magical plants does that bring a ley line there Is does that, that... Mm? i don't do know do you have hmm ponder <laughs> i know interesting i like to think about it in like uh, how you said feng shui earlier Mm -hmm. and how um it is uh belief still um in china uh that uh they're dragon lines and feng shui <gasps> i love that i know you do. i'm gonna call them dragon lines from mm -hmm. now on they're not ley lines they're dragon lines they're dragon lines Absolutely. and the, the incas used spirit lines with the incan temple of the sun and how, how do you say that Cusco? 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 Okay. Cusco? Cusco. I'm so sorry. Uh, as their hub, making like roots with wakas, like yep. W A K A S, like apostrophe A S. It's, it's really interesting. You know, like we've got Stonehenge, obviously, that's a circle of stones, but yeah. a whole bunch of different cultures also created circle type stones absolutely and that's what i that's what i'm kind of saying what i was alluding to earlier yeah yeah i think it's so cool um but um 
for the Aboriginal people of Australia, mm-hmm. uh, song lines, also <gasps> called them dreaming called... tracks. Yeah. I love both of those. Our paths across sky and land, or land and sky. I read that backwards, but it came out the same way, uh, mm-hmm. which marked the roots followed by uh, localized creator beings. Like deities i guess maybe aliens question mark aliens question mark so the paths are recorded in traditional songs stories dance and painting i love this by Mm -hmm. singing these songs in sequence indigenous uh people can navigate the deserts of australia's interior fascinating i just think is so cool see i love the idea that okay so the dude we were talking about watkins he came up Mm -hmm. with the term ley lines but Dragon lines, spirit lines, song lines, dreaming tracks. That see, this concept has been out there forever and ever. It's not. Oh just yeah, modern. yeah. So no, I think yeah. Ley lines are a thing. Mm-hmm. There, there are a bunch of famous ones. Okay. Um, and I don't know that we'll list them all, but we'll start with the Michael and Mary line, which mm-hmm. obviously has a connection to religion, but, um ley lines i think predate christianity but anyway this Mm -hmm. famous line runs through the united kingdom and it connects several important sites including saint michael's mount glastonbury tour and the city of london and it is associated with the energies of divine masculine and feminine oh and then you have the saint michael line which is another key ley line that runs across Europe from Cornwall to the Holy Land, passing through sacred sites dedicated to St. Michael. Mm -hmm. Now, that discussion that I was saying way back in the beginning, where what's sacred to one person may not be sacred to another. Yeah. So like to pagans, we could give a shit about the Bible. And I mean, I'm sorry, that's that came across worse than I meant it to be. But we we don't follow like it's not sacred to us the the things Mm -hmm. in the bible are not sacred to us so this saint michael is not going to be something that's so like it won't yeah it won't be like sacred to you but in other people's lives it might be sacred to them yeah so so how so does that mean it still is on a ley line because it was sacred to enough people to make the ley line go that way or i don't see why not yeah i don't see why not in Peru, th- Peru actually has a lot of ley lines from what oh, I heard. The, okay. the Let's go to Nazca Peru. lines. Mm-hmm. These are ancient geoglyphs and are thought to align with ley lines that have astronomical significance, reflecting the spiritual practices of that Nazca culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Stonehenge, of course. Oh, yeah. Stonehenge is one of the most famous ancient monuments in the entire world. And it's often cited as being situated on a ley line particularly the michael ley line Mm -hmm. uh which is supposed to extend from saint michael's mount to cornwall to the church of saint michael in london um stonehenge is on that ley line as well Hmm. and it it's alignment it's aligned with the solstices and all of that too so it's a very powerful spiritual site which people in modern times still go and and visit and practice and yeah and, yeah know, on the solstices and that kind of thing i mean i think it's really cool um in general to think about all these places because they all have like their history uh regardless of anything like that so i feel like even itself like i know i was like mm, you need a lot of people to yeah have this type of energy type of thing but if it does go based on our energy, then all of these places were frequently visited and they would have influenced and the ley lines. Are still visited. That's yeah. We're not talking about just in one time. We're talking about throughout time. And it, Yeah, they're still being. Mm-hmm. They're still being visited. Stonehenge so, is still I guess having people walk to visit. My them. question would be, would us still visiting them even though they aren't quote modern today and used today like how they used to be are Mm -hmm. we still visiting them because our energies gravitate to these really high potent energy places like ley lines Mm -hmm. like do we still want to be in these areas as humans who navigate off of energy because these are high energy places 
I think so. I feel like we're still creating that energy and keeping it in motion by mm -hmm. continually visiting these places. Yeah, I think so. I mean, but but again, these are man-made places. Mm -hmm. But I think they're man-made on these locations because the people that were making them felt that power at the, at that yeah. spot. Yeah. Like we we went to those locations in general because we felt the energies and then we just built on top. Yeah. But I've got uh, another uh, Peru one. Oh, yeah. The Machu Picchu. I love saying that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Machu Picchu, Peru. The ancient Incan city in the Andes is sometimes linked to ley lines because of its precise archi architectural mm -hmm. uh, alignment with its celestial events. I mean, that's what's so yeah. fascinating to me is all these ancient cultures had this profound astronomical knowledge and they couldn't space travel and they didn't have well, the Hubble I always, telescope. I always say this, okay? I always say this. We mm -hmm. as humans, no matter five years ago or 50 million years ago, if we were mm -hmm. here 50 million years ago. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. We have always been so interested and fond of the stars and the sky and what happens out there. And when you think about ancient civilizations, they didn't have light pollution like how we do in modern right. day. So You're that's right. all that they had to stare at at night. Sure, that obviously they had light sources, blah, blah, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm just I mean, saying, naturally, bet, that's bet, what they stared at all the time. I, and I bet it was profoundly beautiful to probably, the point that we can't was, even fathom because of our light so energy. It probably so beautiful that they viewed it as divine. They mm -hmm. viewed it as this beautiful thing that only appears to them when the sun goes down and it lights the sky, all these millions of dots and beautiful twinkles. So, mm -hmm. of course, they are going to align their structures off of this beautiful map in the sky. Especially since it repeats itself. It's a cycle. Yeah. You know, the summer solstice, the winter solstice, mm -hmm. the, you know. Every and, season, and they're the same. Yeah, it, and they, yeah, they realign cool. themselves. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, August 28th, which is when we're recording this. So two days ago, when you all are listening to this, there is a special alignment, again, of certain planets in the oh, sky sweet. that you can see. <laughs> yeah, this is Sorry a very <laughs> powerful time. Sorry um, to tell you so late. Oops. We tend to do that. Um, tell us about the Great Pyramid. Okay, I'll tell you about the Pyramid, and we're running long, so we should shorten it a little bit. We do yeah. have a, quite a few. Maybe maybe for an after, after dark or something, we can finish mm -hmm all of these because they're all just fun cool places that could mm -hmm. potentially be ley lines and so the great pyramid of giza um is often associated with ley lines due to its precise alignment with uh, cardinal points and other mm -hmm. ancient structures mm -hmm. and some theories suggest that the pyramid is located on a powerful energy grid that connects it to other sacred sites in egypt so like they had multiple pyramids mm -hmm. and beyond but there are and pyramids that, that's the, that it's are the all beyond. throughout the world. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's the beyond thing that makes me think. Okay, this feeling, this this knowledge, tra you know, transmitted itself through the ley lines. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and then I mean, an, you know the who, which um, culture was it was the Mayans that saw oh, they, thought yeah. that we that you know they had their precise calendar. Uh, I mean, all the way up to 2012 from yeah. when they were way, way yeah. back then. That's crazy. But I was reading a conspiracy theory about this while I was doing this research. And one conspiracy theory is that the world really did end in 2012 per that Mayan calendar. But it's been sucked. The earth has been sucked into a black hole and we just don't realize we're all dead yet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if we're all sucked into a black hole, do I still have to pay taxes? <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> until until the black hole until it works and happens, do I have to go to, to work tomorrow? Taxes. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> we're all dead anyways. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a bunch more places. Um, but one here in the United States is mm -hmm. Sedona, Arizona. And it's famous for those red rock formations like yeah, you think yeah. of with the Grand Canyon and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. 
Um, and it's supposed to be a center of spiritual and mystical energy. Mm -hmm. And it has vortexes there. Do Ooh. you remember when we went to North Carolina and the mountains and we went to Blowing Rock and there was yeah. that vortex there that totally yeah. messed with gravity? Yeah, that was that, so cool. That was the coolest thing. I feel like that has to be a ley line crossroad. Oh, yeah. I, I could got probably to see that. I mean, I probably. I think so. Probably. I, I mean, it was the most bizarre. Y'all, if y'all haven't been to Blowing Rock, North Carolina... Um, I can't remember the name of the actual Oh, you place, can probably find it easily. It's got a gravitational anomaly. A place anomaly. that defies gravity. Just Google it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is crazy. And I bet to do some spells there would mm -hmm. be amazing. Although oh, they'd yeah. probably kick you out. But um, anyway, also the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, yes. The Bermuda Triangle. So I was looking at maps of ley lines. And it had like, I don't know, 20. 20 different ley lines crisscrossing right there at the Bermuda Triangle. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, yeah, that's where all these planes and boats and all of that have disappeared to. The veil is so thin there. Absolutely. They crossed over to and, a different dimension. And they're in the purgatory. They're in a different dimension. They're <laughs> I in the hope dimension. they're not in purgatory. They're in the dimension the other dimensions. where the Monopoly man has the monocle. Which might not be purgatory, because I remember him having a monocle. They're over there, and we're over here in the monocle world. But so, back to that fat lava deactivated on Tumblr, dude. Mm -hmm. Can I can I move on to that? I don't know. We're running long. Okay, let me... I feel like this should be an after dark. The how to find ley lines. A he goes... Two. Or I say he. I don't know, but... They. You can they, see they, it was a very nice little article. So okay. definitely go check it well, out. Maybe we can have a part two to this or something. Okay. Yeah. Cause we've got how to find lay lines. Let's see what else we've got. Um, We've got how Ireland thinks of them and then things to keep in mind. So it might just be a short little after dark or after, something after dark or we a can, bonus episode, bonus, or something. whatever. Cause it is long. Cause we love you all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh okay let's end it here okay and say this will be a little short little bonus that everyone can find on our patreon and i'll post it for free on our patreon oh that's a good idea so let's you can kind of get a taste of or what, what patreon is like yes. and how to get there and how yes. to access it that's a good idea so if you want to hear how to find ley lines based on fat lava deactivated <laughs> <laughs> you can go to our patreon eventually like we're gonna get it up hopefully this weekend um as well as our after dark um yeah we got an after episode dark coming up yeah and uh all of about that. uh demon possession theories y'all oh we're so, so excited we're kind of yeah we're we're so excited if you we're all, experimenting with other topics and it's so if fun. you want to hear that <laughs> then you've got to um join us on patreon and become mm -hmm. a, a and a buzzsprout patron. and sub or subscribe on or buzzsprout, buzzsprout. Mm -hmm. which oh yeah well, i was gonna say we have a new one but we already said that yeah last time yeah <laughs> we're just so happy <laughs> we have a new patron right don't we have a new patron do, do we have a new patron too we do we do <laughs> we have a new patron so thank you literally thank you to anybody who's our patron yes and anybody you. who supports us in any way that's i mean even just listening to our episodes helps us a lot um yes so let me do our little outro uh okay. so if you like what you heard and you want to hear more uh you can find more information about us at www.c3witchypodcast.com it has all of our links to our social medias, our episode information, where to find our episodes. Um, it has our merch, which we're in the middle of a shift, which has been kind of hectic. But I know we really need to get it up. Uh -huh. too. Um, but we are in the middle of a shift and we will let you guys know as soon as it is up and ready to go. Um you can also find our blog there. We like to post little fun things on our blog every now and then. Mm -hmm. And then um what else? I think that's it. Think that's it. Thank you all for listening. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. We'll be back. And until then, stay witchy. Woo. <laughs>